Kindergarten and Frederick Frobel, presented by Beth Wasley. Frederick Frobel was a German educationalist who lived from 1782 to 1852. Before turning to education, Frobel studied forestry, botany, and mineralogy, but it was getting a job in one of Johann Pestalozzi's schools that started him down the path that eventually led him to become the founder of the first schools in early childhood education. He discovered that the brain develops dramatically between birth and age three and therefore felt that it was important to begin education early. He named these new schools kindergarten or child's garden. The name has a dual meaning. He wanted to teach children in a garden to expose them to nature and beauty and he also felt that children should be nourished and nurtured like plants in a garden. Frobel said, children are like tiny flowers. They are varied and need care, but each is beautiful alone and glorious when seen in the community of their peers. His kindergartens had three essential parts, games, dancing, and singing to promote healthy activity and movement, Frobel understood the importance of movement and learning. Observing and nurturing of plants to stimulate awareness of the natural world. Frobel felt it was important for children to experience and understand the natural order and beauty of the world firsthand. It was more important to do that than it was to learn and memorize facts. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, creative play. He felt it was through playing that children acquired knowledge about themselves and the outside world. This contrasted with the prevailing views of his time that considered play idle, disorderly, and undignified. Frobel is also well known for creating a line of toys he called Frobel's Gifts. These toys, he felt, would allow children to experience firsthand the design and beauty of the natural world. He wanted to help children perceive the geometric building blocks of the world and to allow them to experiment and explore with shape, color, pattern, and design. There are many well-known artists and architects who credit these gifts for giving them found the foundations in art and design that they needed to be successful in their careers. Architects such as Frank Lloyd Wright and Buckminster Fuller grew up playing with Frobel's gifts. Artists such as Paul Clay, Vasily Kandinsky and Piet Mondrian all also went to a Frobel-based kindergarten. Frobel is considered the pioneer of many innovations in education, including multiple intelligences, play-based learning, child-centered learning, parent involvement, and the use of music, games, and movement for education. The theories he developed later inspired edu educationalists such as Maria Montessori, and Rudolf Steiner. Let's consider classroom applications. While his theories focus on early childhood, I think we can all take into our classroom some guidance from his main philosophies. One, that play is the engine of real learning. Play engages everyone. It stimulates the brain, encourages social interactions, creates a family atmosphere in the room. When one can make their lessons playful or game-like, then we optimize learning potential. For example, perhaps in a physics class, a game could be who could build the catapult that launches balls the farthest. Or maybe in a math class, children could play a game, a card game of war, where the first child to multiply the two cards that are face up gets the card, and the winner in the end is the one with the most cards. Two, humans are creative. Frobel felt that true education should help children understand that we all are, in essence, creative beings. In our classrooms, we can ask ourselves, how can we help stimulate creativity? One way we can do this is by offering students choices and giving them opportunities to flex their creative muscles. For example, in English, perhaps a teacher should let students choose how they would best like to present their book report, a poster, a TV commercial, or a small skit. Finally, children learn best from the direct interaction with the world. Let the students experience their lessons directly, take them into nature, do physical experiments, try to incorporate object lessons in your classrooms with opportunities for direct and concrete observation. For example, let your students go into a garden 